Hey, how's it going? So with me today, I have the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. Now, I did get this laptop with every intention of using it for my portable gaming. So when I go back home to visit family in different states or if I'm on a business trip, I wanted to bring this laptop with me for all of my gaming needs. But one thing I noticed when I was watching a lot of reviews was that I wanted to see some video editing going on as well as some motion graphics work because this laptop is more than capable of doing so, but I wanted to see a visual example of real-time editing so I can get my best estimation to see if this is capable. So my goal with this video is to do some video editing the way I normally will for work. And then from there, I want you guys to watch along, watch as much of it as you would like, and use that as an example, and see if you wanna buy this laptop for video editing as well as for gaming based on the needs that you have. And for those of you that are new here, hi, my name is Tony. I am a professional video editor. I work alongside Thomas Frank for both of our channels, the Thomas Frank channel where we teach people how to be capable in their lives, as well as the Thomas Frank Explains channel where we teach people how to be Notion experts. I also work at Nebula where we post original content alongside many of our other creators. Now, I'm not gonna be doing any benchmarks. I'm not really gonna go into depth with anything either because all I want is this video to be a video alongside other videos that you could potentially watch to see how this laptop works in real-time editing and you make your purchasing decision based on that. Now, I will let you guys know on the specific specs of my laptop and there is one modification that I had made to it. So, this is the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro with the i7-2700H, 14 cores with 20 threads. When I bought this, it came with 32 gigabytes of 4,800 megahertz DDR5 RAM, but I have already upgraded it to 64 gigs because for my needs, I already know that 64 gigs needs to be my minimum. This also comes with a one terabyte NVMe SSD and a 3070 Ti. I did buy this one at Micro Center, so maybe this one might be slightly different from another one that you've seen, but just know that is the exact model that I'm using and this will be used for my testing. All right, so now let's finally get into doing some video editing. So just so you guys know, most of the footage that I work with is 4K H.264. And then when it comes to motion graphics, I use After Effects a lot. Uh, so for this video purposes, just go ahead and watch how I work. Uh, maybe you can learn something along the way with that, but above all, just look at the fluidity of the device because that is the whole point of this, and I will be making some comments along the way. All right, so this is a Thomas Frank Explains channel that I am working on right now. So again, everything's in 4K. Um, I'm also gonna be hopping between a multicam sequence, uh, making some adjustments along the way. So I'm gonna just be doing editing right here first, and then a little bit later, I'm just gonna start messing around in After Effects and seeing how that works. I have also created proxies to help. So let me turn off the proxies. I'll keep things at halfway. Usually that's how I would do it. Um, actually, let's start off in full and just see what that looks like. So let's take a look. That I've tried to showcase my range. I've got my artistic edit. I have my how-to edit, which also features a quick turnaround time. I'll highlight it there. I have the next level interview edit. So this kind of shows how I can craft a compelling story or narrative out of a lot of interview footage. Highlight it there. I have the next level interview edit. So this kind of shows how I can craft a compelling story or narrative out of a lot of interview footage, which is a rare skill for editors. I have the Hollywood level edit, and then I have a few other things, short form video and music videos. So this, if a potential client is landing on my portfolio, should show them the breadth and depth of my editing skill. And this should ideally be the main thing that sells them on why they should hire me. Beneath that, I have what people are saying. And here I've just kind of snipped some comments from my YouTube videos of people pointing out that the editing is really good. And this is very much like a testimonial on a sales page for a product or a service. And a lot of research has shown that it's much like a testimony comments from my YouTube videos of people pointing out that the editing is really good. videos of people pointing out that the editing is really good and this is very much like a testimonial on a sales page for a product or a service and a lot of research has shown that testimonials have a drastic positive effect on conversion rates and getting people to actually take action so same thing applies to you as a potential freelancer or potential employee if you have testimonials if you have references it's very good to Freelancer or potential employee who adds a potential freelancer or potential employee if you have testimony. 
If you guys are noticing, so now the fans are ramping up. So let's see where we're at. So, so far, I've been editing just for a little bit already. We're looking at um, around 14 gigabytes of memory used. And my CPU is usually hover hovering. Uh, what is that? Probably like the 20? No. We're getting close to like 40% usage already. So, all right. Not bad. Central employee, if you have testimonials, if you have references, it's very good to show them. And I'm showcasing them right here. I also have my skills and services. I know that I'm a full stack video editor and I show uh, all the different things I can do. And again, I'm trying to show the breadth and depth of what I can provide. I don't want to just say I'm a video editor. I want to say I can do assembly cuts. I can do color grading. I can do VFX and I can do sound design, even custom sound design. When you're trying to sell yourself, you want to point out. When you're trying to sell yourself, I'm a video editor, I want to say I can do, a, I don't want to just say I'm a video editor. All right, let's try that. That might be too fast, honestly. I want to say I'm a video editor I want to say I can do a okay what if we I can do I want to say I can do assembly cuts I can do color grading mm, we could probably keyframe this a certain way honestly It'd probably be good to start bottom left here and then just kind of like hover over so we'll start there Make that one as well. We'll start here. I want to say I can do assembly cuts. I can do color grading. I can do color grading and then hover over. <sighs> kind of like that. Kind of ease it probably too between the two. So we can ease that over. Cuts. I can do color grading. I can do VFX. Yep, that works. And then probably drag it a little bit. I can do color grading. I can do VFX. Assembly cuts. I can do color grading. I can do VFX. That's a bit much. I can do color grading. I can do VFX. There you go. All right, something like that for now. Video editor, I want to say I can do assembly cuts. I can do color grading. I can do VFX, and I can do sound design, even custom sound design. When you're trying to sell yourself, because your potential clients can't read your mind, you have to actually sit and design, even custom sound design. When you're trying to sell yourself, you want to point out exactly what you can do, because your potential clients can't read your mind have to actually say what you can do before they can make a decision on it. Make a decision on it. Uh, this is another interesting section, and I don't see a lot of this on portfolios or resume. This is enough before they can make a decision on it. Uh, this is another interesting section, and I don't see a lot of this on portfolios or resumes. I think there should be more of it. I do see a lot of this on sales pages, especially ones that convert very well. And that's almost like a letter explaining not just why I'm the best person for the job. It's almost like a letter explaining hmm. is another interesting section. And I don't see a lot of this on portfolios or res resumes. I I guess the question is, what would? Hmm. On portfolios or resumes, I. Portfolios or resumes, I think there should be more of it. I do see a lot of this on sales pages, especially ones that convert very well. And that's almost like a letter explaining not just why. I'm the best person for the job, but my investment in video editing is. 
watching this while you're going through this, think about how you can apply this to any niche that you're in. This isn't just useful for video editing, it's useful for anything you're trying to persuade people to hire you for. So industry doesn't matter here. Here I talk about doesn't matter here. Here I talk about the value of great editing. I talk about how it's a language. It's not about just throwing transitions and flashy effects on a video, it's about choosing when to use effects and choosing when to have the editing get out of the way. It's about being cognizant of the context, of the theme, of the action that you actually want the viewer to take. And here I even show how great editing can have a huge outsized effect on... All right, so I've been editing now for what feels like 10 minutes and wow, I just gotta say, okay, so a couple of things that I'm noticing is uh, one, Yes, the fans do seem to ramp up the more you use it, which is kind of obvious. You're using a gaming laptop essentially to do creative work. Uh, so there's a lot of power in there. That's a lot of heat. You got to get rid of it. But other than that, I am noticing just how well this laptop is already keeping up with what I have to do. It hasn't dropped any frames. It, I'm actually editing uh, without any proxies. I am doing this in 4K, full resolution and this laptop is handling it well, and I'm working in a multi-cam sequence, which is also very impressive. Now, to be fair, this isn't anything too extensive yet. You know, what, part of my creative work is also doing motion graphics, so let's go ahead now and let's switch to the motion graphics side, and then I'm gonna see if there's a way I can create something really quick somewhere so we can have a playback of not just uh, the editing portion as well, but also playing back motion graphics alongside the video. Okay, let's make actually a little mock-up of uh, an After Effects thing for this section of the video here. One second. This is also a good example of me working alongside two pieces of software and seeing how the laptop can keep up with that. So let's go ahead and delete this. That's just my reminder to always save. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, see what I can create here. So actually, let's, let's use a Mr. Horse background just to see how well this laptop keeps up with even that. Uh, so let's just say we wanted to use, um, yeah, we can just use this like texture background. Okay. And this is very much like a testimonial on Okay. Now everything is still at full quality too. And this is very much like a testimonial on a lot of sales page for powers. Okay, we got some drug frames, but we're playing it from RAM, so that's uh, it's understandable. Good. And this is very much like a testimonial on a sales page for a product or a service. And a lot of research has shown that testimonials have a drastic... Okay, and from there, we're already peaking at 50 gigs of RAM used. Uh, and that is exactly why I had to upgrade the RAM. But, okay, so now let's say I'm going to make a, a paper, a piece of paper type thing. Um, so we can do something like this. Because we want to act like this is a testimonial. And again, everything is still in full quality and the laptop is keeping up with it, which is uh, pretty good. A lot of research has shown that testimonials have a drastic positive effect on conversion rates and getting people.
Now again, I am... All right, now I'm gonna put a comment that someone wrote on a video that I edited for the channel before, which eh, for all intents and purposes, this is not looking as good. Uh, but somebody put, okay, but can we appreciate the video quality? I'm having to watch this video twice to admire the production and to actually retain whatever information. You're totally killing it. That's good. I'm glad that they liked the editing in that video since I did, since I did do the, do all the editing for it. We can't even talk right now. Um, okay, and then let's just uh, have it animate in just to pretend that this is something for now. So like, piece of paper, testimonial. And then if I were to change its position uh, to like, I don't know, down. Oh, okay, that should probably, that should probably, okay, there you go. Not the way to do it, but I'm doing it anyway because that's what I got right now. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and just bring that piece of paper right back up. And this is very much like it. And this is very... Very much, and this is very much. And this is very much. And this is very much like a testimonial on a sales page for a product or a service. And a lot of research has shown that the, the testimonials. All right. This is very much like a testimonial on a sales page for a product or a service. And a lot of research has shown that testimonials have a track positive effect on conversion rates and getting people to actually take action. So okay, so let's watch it back. And uh, this is a good example of basically going from Premiere, getting a piece of section that you want to have like, um, like an After Effects thing for, throwing it on screen, bouncing around between the two, playing it back in full quality, which is also still awesome. A lot of research has shown that testimonials have a drastic positive effect on conversion rates and getting people to actually take action. So, all right, and then doing all of that, I was sitting at still like 50 gigabytes of RAM being used, which really is very common for me, especially because of After Effects. But nonetheless, guys, I mean, this is a good example of what is possible. And uh, needless to say, this is this is pretty cool. Okay, so what's the final verdict? What do I think of using this laptop? And you guys already saw it based on this whole little tutorial-ish section video that I just showed, but this is more than capable of being used for content creation. And as someone that does this professionally and really needs a device that keeps up with him, this has definitely shown that it's capable of doing so. Now remember, the only modification that I have done is play 64 gigs of a crucial DDR5 RAM. I'll probably throw it on screen so you guys know the exact ones that I bought that I'm using in this device. And if you are looking to probably buy this, 
I would say do it. I mean, this is definitely shown for this price range that this is more than capable of being a really good work laptop for a long time. Just keep in mind that this does weigh like five and a half pounds and you know, do you can you deal with the fan speed, the fan noise rather that, uh, that this thing emits when you are putting it under load? Personally, I don't care. I already accept that a lot of Windows laptops would be doing so, so. Yeah, I hope that you guys are interested in buying this because this is something that I definitely will be using. And I still think it's kind of cool. It went from me just wanting to get this for gaming on the go, maybe doing some, some work on the side with this, to now for sure knowing that I am more than capable of doing my work. And like I mentioned earlier, everything I do, I try to take as seriously as I can because as someone who is a professional, I hope to pass along knowledge and share information that I find valuable so I can put anyone who chooses to watch my videos in a better position position after watching it. And with that, I wanna share something I'm very excited about. So I actually have my very first introduction to video editing basics class on Nebula. And in this class, I go over not just editing basic knowledge that I feel a lot of people can get, but knowledge about traditional media, knowledge about the equipment like I did in this video, about how to approach buying your tech like a video editor and thinking about things that I feel not a lot of people consider when they're first buying their first computer. I did my best to put a lot of information in this class that I feel is gonna put you in a way better position than when you came into watching it. And if you do end up watching my class, I highly advise you to watch other classes that we do have to offer. For example, like Graham Harther, who teaches you about sound editing, sound engineering, and how to make your audio and your videos that much better. I myself already took that class. I've seen so many of our other classes on Nebula. And if you guys are interested, I would highly advise you to check it out. So if you are interested in watching my class as well as Graham Harther's, go down to the link in the description and sign up today. And if you guys do end up liking my class, who knows, maybe I can do a more advanced class in the future. Feel free to follow me on Twitter. And if you did end up taking my class, do let me know on Twitter. I would love to retweet it. I would love to see what you guys liked. And potentially, like I said, if you guys do end up liking it, I would like to know what kind of an advanced class you would like later on. But all right, till the next time, guys. Have a good one.